What will happen if a Live player wins this weekend at Augusta National? Whether you love Live or hate it, it's going to be one of the biggest talking points of this weekend. Second to probably how Tiger gets on around there. And whether you think the new immersion of the Live Tour has been good or bad for the general game of golf, there is no question that it's going to add another storyline to the majors this year. Because the main talking point, argument, discussion when it comes to the PJ Tour versus the Live Tour is the standard of golf, world ranking points and the general quality of golf that is played on their tour. Yet this is the first real chance that we get to see 18 Live players tear up with the best golfers in the world around arguably the most famous golf course that we know. Now when it comes to the consumption of golf myself when it comes to TV considering I play, teach, coach, fit and my general job and living is around golf I watch very little golf on TV whether it's PJ Tour, European Tour, Live Tour, you name it. However I'm always transfixed when it comes to the majors everything gets put to a side and I will watch those relentlessly. So whilst having this discussion with my friends and golf partners I wanted to put it out to you guys and get your general thoughts and just like I've asked them what will happen if a Live Tour player actually wins Augusta. But if you look at their top 10 and some of their coveted players, we're going to look at some of the chances that these guys are potentially going to be holding that trophy on the 18 green come Sunday. Because in my personal opinion, even though they're relatively outnumbered and some would say outclassed, I don't think it's necessarily out the realms of possibility. For example, Cameron Smith, the Open Champion winner, has had six starts at the Masters, four of them being in the top 10 and three of those being in the top five. Rich, if you're aware when it comes to Augusta, there's some players that just get on around it. Just play well. Short game, tee shots, you name it. And if we look through the past champions around Augusta, it's quite a common theme that the players that just do well around there will more than likely win one, if not more of them. There's no question Cameron Smith, in my eyes, is one of the best talents the Live Tour stable has in its arsenal. But unlike some of the other players we're going to mention, it's a question of how he's going to be able to handle that kind of pressure around the golf course as the other six starts he had definitely didn't have this many eyeballs on him. Then we've got to turn our attention to Dustin Johnson, sixth at St Andrews in the Open. He's won it before in 2020 and again has a known track record of finishing in the top 10 around Augusta. With a player of his calibre, not to mention the mental state that he has when it comes to majors, I really don't think you could look past DJ having a great Friday, Saturday tournament and considering I'm publishing this on the Thursday and I have no idea what the result are going to be therefore you've got to be looking at both of those players come Sunday definitely being on the hunt and the chase that they have the lowest scores coming down the final stretch at Augusta. Next up is Brooks Kepka, and obviously had a win or Orlando last week and obviously the question marks would be around the quality of players that he would actually be competing against versus if he was actually playing on the PGA Tour but then that's again why I think this weekend is going to be so interesting and again in the past when Tiger had has very rarely missed the cut. There is a certain level of buzz that is then lost on the Saturday, Sunday, as us long-term golf fans have been so used to him obviously finishing on the Sunday. It's why it's going to be such an interesting weekend and it's the first real test that we're going to see these players head-to-head -head around a championship golf course with their immense amount of pressure and that is essentially what makes a major champion a major champion when it is all on the line and everyone is watching. That being said, Brooks is no stranger when it comes to the pressure and obviously with four majors already under his belt you've got to be thinking with a boost of confidence last week with his win even on the live tour that he does stand a good chance of making the weekend that being said the green jacket had eluded him especially when he was in his prime as well so it'd be fascinating to see how that combination of technique and also mental state is going to fare for him when it comes to the closing days next up with the bookies rankings we've got to talk about Patrick Reed because if there's any player, any golfer that thrives 
in this villain mentality when the world is against him. It is Patrick Reed. Not only has he won the Masters previously, this is the kind of stuff that brings out the best of his golf game. Whether you like him or you don't like him, this is the kind of scenario that you would like to think he's going to relish more than any other live player on the golf course. And I can guarantee you he wants to be the one to win the first major from the live tour stable. And I'd like to think out of all the players, that's going to benefit him most when it comes to trying to close out the final stretch of the tournament. One of the major reasons why I love the Masters and especially the leaderboard is we get to see past champions that potentially aren't playing on the PGA Tour. Whether it's your Freddie Couples or your Bernard Langer, those types of golfers again just seem to fare well, especially in the first two days. And it's always great to see those players in the top 10 before the cut and then potentially the rest of the field then overtaking them in the later stages. But that's why these next three players, Charles Schwartzel, Phil Mickelson and Bubba Watson, all past champions, always going to be exempt and allowed to play in Augusta, even if they're on the live tour or not. Again, it's just going to be a good test and a good point for the viewers to see what is the standard of live golf at the moment versus the PGA Tour. How well will they compete? How well will they fare? And arguably, no matter what happens this weekend, there's going to be an immense amount of content, immense amount of memes, immense amount of jokes. And ultimately, there is going to be one victor, whether it is the PGA Tour or the Live. One thing is for sure, if a Live Tour player does win Augusta this weekend, we will certainly hear about it. Probably a lot more so than if a PGA Tour wins. They are the underdog. They don't have as many players in the field. That being said, Augusta National, the Masters, the tournament, for the majority of golf fans and professional golfers comes with its own challenges altogether. It doesn't just take technical ability and I think we'd all like to agree on average the technical ability of the PGA Tour is better than the Live Tour at the moment when you look at their stable. However, the handful of players that you potentially could see lifting the green jacket towards the end of this weekend do have a considerable advantage when it comes to experience around Augusta and potentially that's going to fare them quite well compared to a big percentage of the PGA Tour players that obviously want the same kind of victory. Either way, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this weekend, who you think is going to be able to take home the win, the victory, and then ultimately, what do you think will happen if a Live Tour player actually wins? If you like this video, you'd potentially like to see the bag Matt Fitzpatrick won the US Open with last year because his irons certainly weren't new.